Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Steven Tenenberg and I am the program director for the Surgical Critical Care Fellowship at the Detroit Medical Center and Wayne State University School of Medicine. Uh, this presentation will hopefully give you much information about our program and to help you in making a decision. We uh, welcome your application and look forward to uh, meeting you virtually. <clears throat> Let me start off by giving you a little history about our fellowship, particularly the adult track, which was approved in August of 2009 and became operational with our first fellow in July of 2010. Since then, uh, and up through this year and next year, we've had uh, two fellows each year. These two adult spots are available through the NRMP match. I serve as the program director for the overall fellowship, and Dr. Lydia Donahue is the associate program director and primarily runs the pediatric track of our fellowship. Your application in this presentation focuses on the adult track only. The fellowship is based out of three hospitals. The primary hospital where most of the training takes place is at Harper University Hospital in Detroit, Michigan. This is a tertiary care university hospital, offers full services and a full complement of residencies and fellowships. Additional training takes place at Detroit Receiving Hospital. This is located on the same campus as Harper Hospital. It is an urban uh, trauma and emergency medicine hospital. It has a level one trauma center that serves primarily the downtown Detroit area. It also has a level one burn unit as well as a large hyperbaric oxygen center. Finally, some training also takes place at Sinai Grace Hospital. This is an affiliated hospital with our program. Uh, it is off campus about 10 miles from the downtown campus. It also is an urban, primarily trauma hospital and officially is a level two trauma center. <clears throat> Let me now introduce you to each of the surgical ICU services at each of those hospitals. Firstly, at Harper Hospital, our uh, ICU tower uh, consists of five ICUs in one area of the hospital on different floors and has anywhere from 42 to 45 beds at any one time. The surgical service usually has an average census of 12 to 18 patients. This service covers surgery and all surgical subspecialties with the one exception of not covering neurosurgery but the services we do cover are cardiothoracic, which includes an ECMO service, vascular sur surgery, general surgery, bariatrics, gynecology, urology, and transplant. And we also care for the surgical patients in the Carmanos Cancer Institute, which is located within Harper Hospital. That is a separate ICU. And the patients there that we cover primarily consist of thoracic surgery, head and neck surgery, and general surgery. <clears throat> the Harper SICU service I would describe as a nearly closed unit model. It has a dedicated SICU service and serves a primary role in the care of its patients. The attending intensivists who round on this service are dedicated to the SICU during their weeks of rounding. The time is currently divided up half each to surgeons and anesthesiologists. The primary surgeons are myself and Dr. Taris, and several of the anesthesia intensivists are listed uh, as well. The service consists of a, a fellow, one of our surgical ICU fellows, a full complement of residents, which include two mid-level general surgery residents, we will also have three or four anesthesia residents, both senior, mid-level, and interns, and usually one or two interns from other affiliated services. We do have a physician assistant who is dedicated to our service on Monday through Thursday, 
primarily serving us during the midday to mid-evening period. There also is a dedicated pharmacist who rounds with us and a dietitian who looks after the dietary needs of all of the patients on our service. Let's next turn to the SICU service at Detroit Receiving Hospital. That service I would describe as a semi-closed unit with a dedicated SICU service that plays a collaborative role in the care of the patients. The average census on this service is about 12 to 15 patients, comprising mostly trauma and general surgery patients, as well as critically ill burn patients from the burn unit. The attending intensivists who round on this service are all surgeons with trauma and surgical critical care experience. The team consists of a surgical ICU fellow, several general surgery residents mid-level. Uh, there often is a plastics surgery resident on the service as well as some additional interns. The burn unit, which is also housed in Detroit Receiving Hospital, allows this service to care for the critically ill and usually vented patients on the service. There also is a large hyperbaric oxygen service at Detroit Receiving Hospital and fellows are encouraged to participate in critical cases as they come along. There is an operative experience available for the fellow on the service that primarily deals with the care of the burn patients which the service covers. Finally, Sinai Grace Hospital, I would also describe as a semi-closed unit with a dedicated SICU service. Its census usually is about 12 to 18 patients and comprises primarily trauma patients, but also general surgery, vascular neurosurgery patients, which the service does take care of at Sinai Grace, as well as a small cardiothoracic program. There are three attending intensivists who round on this service. All are surgeons and critical care certified. The service consists of a surgical ICU fellow when rounding at Sinai Grace. The residents on the service include usually one to two mid-level general surgery residents a mid-level anesthesia resident, and some additional residents from emergency medicine, transitional programs, and occasionally medical critical care. This service also has a dedicated uh, PharmD, as well as an advanced practice nurse who is dedicated to the service. A little bit about what a surgical ICU fellow rotation looks like. Uh, we usually start each fellow off at either Harper University Hospital and Detroit Receiving Hospital. And in the second and third month, each fellow will do a required elective of echocardiography with the Harper University Hospital Cardiology Service. The fellows then usually flip back and forth between Harper University Hospital and Detroit Receiving Hospital. Around the middle of the year, we incorporate in rotations at Sinai Grace Hospital. Many of the fellows opt to do two weeks to a month in the neuro ICU at Detroit Receiving Hospital, which has dedicated neurointensivists. And there is an additional elective month. We'll describe what some of those electives are shortly. The on-call uh, schedule or burden for the fellows is quite low. At Harper University Hospital, when on that service, fellows will uh, do in-hospital call two nights per month. Weekends are off on that service. Detroit Receiving Hospital has no call, but there will be some weekend rounding. And Sinai Grace Hospital also has no call, uh, nor does it have weekend rounding. This slide lists some of the electives which are available for our fellows. As I mentioned before, we do require that each of the fellow participate in the one month echocardiography elective or rotation. Uh, they are part of the cardiology uh, echocardiography service at Harper University Hospital 
and this allows them to get a very uh, intense and immersive experience with echocardiography to allow them to use these skills later during the fellowship year. Other electives which are available include some time with anesthesiology, which allows intubation experience as well as intraoperative management of cardiac surgery patients. Nephrology rotation with an emphasis on renal replacement therapy has been very popular. Interventional radiology, allowing fellows to participate and gain experience with bedside uh, thoracentesis and other invasive radiologic procedures. Additionally available is some time on the hyperbaric oxygen service at Detroit Receiving Hospital. Fellows that might have an interest in some pediatric experience can benefit from the affiliation we have with our children's hospital, both on their surgical ICU service as well as their ECMO service. Research opportunities or even a month off are available for that, and other electives can be developed for particular interests. The didactic lecture series for the fellowship primarily is based out of Harper University Hospital. We have two to three lectures per week. These lectures are usually given by the residents on the Harper University Hospital service as well as the fellow, as well as a number of other uh, attendings and support staff discussing uh, specific issues of their disciplines. In addition, there is a weekly journal club that takes place at Harper University Hospital as well. Each month, we do have a surgical critical care M&M that primarily has a didactic purpose that our fellows present uh, interesting uh, or complicated cases at. Detroit Receiving Hospital and Sinai Grace Hospital do have dedicated trauma and morbidity and mortality conferences as well and we anticipate developing a smaller lecture series at Detroit Receiving Hospital. The Department of Surgery, of which we are a component of, has its weekly Grand Rounds and M&M conference on Wednesday morning, and sometimes critical care cases are presented there, and that is another conference available to the fellows. Uh, we do very much promote a disciplined self-learning program during the fellowship. Uh, recommended and required are going through the adult uh, VCCR web-based uh, lecture series, which is available online through the Society of Critical Care Medicine. Towards the middle and end of the year, we highly recommend the Adult Multi-Professional Critical Care Review and Self-Assessment in Critical Care available through the SCCM. Uh, it is very important for fellows to have one large good critical care textbook, primarily for reference and reading. And we've also now have available the American College of Surgeons surgical critical care curriculum available for the fellows to use as well. <clears throat> While the fellowship is primarily uh, not an operative experience, uh, several procedures obviously are available and required during the fellowship. All fellows are usually able to become quite proficient in the performance of bedside percutaneous tracheostomies. Many bronchoscopies, central and arterial line placements are available. Uh, availability to learn intubation, which is a new requirement for the fellowship, can be done both while at Harper University Hospital or with a dedicated two-week rotation with anesthesiology. Over the last several years, our fellows have had no difficulties in achieving the minimum number of cases and procedures to allow for successful board certification. We do very much encourage the fellows to get involved in some research and scholarly activity, and they're encouraged to participate both in ongoing projects within the department 
as well as to develop their own retrospective or even prospective projects during the fellowship year. Experience is also offered in the administration and unit management by participating in local hospital and system-wide critical care meetings and uh, quality initiatives. Instructor courses in the Fundamentals of Critical Care Support and ATLS are also available for the fellows and they are encouraged to complete these courses early on and then can provide lectures and assistance with these courses as they are administered through the year. We very much encourage fellows to attend the annual Society of Critical Care Medicine meeting, which is usually in January and February, and hopefully by this time will be uh, live events. Overall, the Graduate Medical Education Office allows three weeks of vacation time. There is an expense stipend through the year, which is provided by reimbursing fellow expenses for various uh, educational activities, books, meetings, etc and that is for $2,500 per year. The uh, salary for our fellows, at least the current year, would be just over $60,000 for a PGY-4 and just under $65,000 for a PGY-6. A meal card allowance is also given to each fellow, which over the year amounts to up to $600. We do allow moonlighting within the fellowship. A permanent license is required to be able to moonlight. It does go through a GME approval process, uh, but our light call schedule does allow uh, moonlighting at several local opportunities if fellows are interested in that and to supplement their income. A little bit about the affiliations of our fellowship. Uh, all of the hospitals where fellows rotate are part of the Detroit Medical Center, which is an eight hospital system in the Detroit metropolitan area. And the Detroit Medical Center is one of holdings for the tenant healthcare system. We also have a strong affiliation with the Wayne State University School of Medicine and virtually all of the faculty involved with the fellowship are also members of the School of Medicine. Again, I'd like to thank you very much for applying to our fellowship. I hope you found this presentation informative. Uh, my contact information is located below and you're welcome to reach me by email. And hopefully we will have an opportunity to uh, interview you and meet virtually uh, to further explore your interest in our fellowship program.